Hi, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I am so excited by some of the new Bear Yarn lines from Knit Picks that I want to start dyeing them right away. The three new skeins I have chosen today are Knit Picks Simply Cotton Fingering, which is 100% organic cotton. Then there's the Cotton Boucle, which I think is 100% Tagus cotton. And then Lindy Chain, which is a chain plied 70% linen, 30% Pima cotton. And I want to dye these with a technique I've done before. I plan to soak them overnight and then sprinkle them with some dry tulip tie-dye one-step powder. So then we get sort of a speckled, mottled effect to the yarn. But in addition to these three skeins of cellulose fiber, I am also going to dye one skein of stroll fingering, which is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. I am really curious if we will observe any drastic differences between these four different fiber types or, or what, but I think it'll be a lot of fun. The Simply Cotton Fingering Weight Yarn can be a little bit finicky when it comes to uh, being absorbent. So I am going to pre-soak all of this yarn in plain tap water overnight. I just removed the four skeins of yarn from the pre-soak and I just wanted to point out that the, that the soak basin has this yellow color to it. I'm not sure which of the berry yarns that came from, but I wanted to point it out so that way you're not surprised if this happens when you're using any of these yarns. I wrung a lot of the water out of the yarn so that way it's damp but not dripping. And you know, they don't feel like I can't easily squeeze any liquid out. I have laid these on the counter so instead of the loop being side by side, the sides are on top of one another. And now I am going to spread out the fibers like so. Um, so this will give us access to a lot of the fiber in one side. We'll still likely need to flip this. In fact, I'm gonna spread out this one, this bottom side first, but I'm planning to sprinkle dye onto one side. We'll flip it over, see the dye penetration, and then proceed from there as needed. The goal of the day is to end up with something that feels like a watercolor effect um, versus it's going for speckles with this technique. These tulip dyes tend to spread out a lot and so I am feeling rather prepared for that. The one main difference in today's experiment versus the ones that I did with like this during cellulose week is that I'm planning to wrap up the yarn with this plastic wrap when I'm done and then put it into the steamer pot. And instead of the steamer basket I normally use, I'm going to use this deeper basin, um, this pasta basket. There's still plenty of space so I can have like an inch or so of water for steam, but it should fit, be able to fit all four skeins in there at the same time. Um, and. Yeah, but I think that with them wrapped up, less water will be able to enter the fiber, so if the colors still spread as much, it'll be due to the, uh, it'll be due to the dye versus the additional water content. Today I am going to use three different colors of the Dry Tulip One Step Tie-Dye Powder. Red, orange, and black. Which I found, whoops, which I found will take on either a purple or sometimes greenish tinge, depending on the fiber type. When I am dealing with the dry powders today, I am going to be wearing this dust mask, so I might sound a little muffled. Wearing the mask is just a precaution. I deal with a lot of dye, and I don't want to inhale anything. You can see we got a little color already because I just added the top of the powder. Ooh, that orange is fun. To the yarn. 
all of the equipment that I'm using today is dedicated dye equipment. Um, I have a dedicated dye pot and I don't use, oh, I did not cut that far enough. And none of the stuff I use today is used for food. This again is just a precaution because unlike food coloring, nothing here has been FDA approved. But, yeah, the, this tulip powder is really, really fine. Um, and you can see that there's maybe like, not even quite a tablespoon in each packet. Um, but when you get the, the refills, you end up getting three whole packets. So let's do some of this. Ooh, this red looks dark. Oh, that's cool. I'm glad that there's a good difference between the red and the orange, just sort of right away. So I'm trying to make sure I get some towards the end of the yarn. And again, we'll flip this as needed. <laughs> this is a warmer colorway than what I frequently choose to do, but I'm excited. In addition to some of this heavier package, I'm now just, or heavier, um, placement, I'm rubbing my hands for some lighter flux of color over the yarn, which you can't quite see the lighter coverage, but I'm going straight into the orange now, which when I put it on at first, it looks rather red, but then as the dye sort of absorb or not starts to dissolve a little bit, then we see more of the uh, <laughs> more of the yellow tones in it. <laughs> now I love a good non-repeating colorway. So you can see that I'm not adding these in any real specific orientation, although our, or, oh, I guess in order we've got our boucle, the organic cotton, Lindy chain, and then the stroll fingering weight yarn. I have a little bit of dye on my hand, but I'm trying to keep my hands, um, my hands uh, dry. I could wash them in between if I wanted to. But that's all, I think, a matter of personal preference. And so you can sprinkle as light or as heavily as you liked. So you like during the Cellulose week, I really got into playing with this dry tulip powder. And I think if I was doing four of the same type of yarn base, I would still get colorways that would look really different in the end. Different, I found that especially with these tie dyes, different fiber contents absorb the colors a little differently. But also, in addition to that, you know, the coverage, like I might have more orange on one than another. So, yeah, there's a lot that we will see. Okay. Now, you don't really want moving air for this poor part, just because these powders are a lot finer than, for example, uh, Kool-Aid powders. And I'm giving some light black sprinkles. If, as the colors spread, this lighter application, wow, we've got, <laughs> the, the boucle looks so cool. Um, if the colors do spread out a lot, this lighter application um, is part of what I think will give it some of that watercolor feel. Um, at least that's what happened with the other colorway. <laughs> It's hard to know if we'll get something that is the same or drastically different because different colors break differently, um, they look different. But now I'm gonna let this sit for, I think about five minutes just to give the dye, there's still some dry powder I see to give it a little bit of time to soak in. Then I'll come back, we'll flip the yarn over and add dye to the other side. So with the black, you might be able, maybe you can't quite tell, but so on the stroll, the colors 
feel a bit more muted and watered down almost. I'm also seeing some yellow come in, some flux of yellow that might have come from the black. But I'm excited, that plays in really well with the orange and red that we have going on. The, the little spots of color feel starker, a little sharper on the cotton yarns right now, but I am expecting everything to spread out a bit. So I am flipping this, but you can see we do have reasonable color penetration here. I mean, it's not perfect. We have a lot of bare space on this side, but you do see there is some color coming through. And I don't mind if we get some white left behind in here. So I'm flipping this over and spreading things out. I think on the well, the Lindy chain is a bit, even though it's also fingering weight like this one, like the Simply Cotton, it feels uh, a bit thinner, maybe because the chain ply is so nice and airy. All right, take two, although I wanna make sure I dry my hands first, because after touching the damp yarn, actually, not, oh yeah, hint of color transfer there. <laughs> Making sure, okay. And again, let's start with the red. There's a lot of dye left. But I am having a lot of fun. So in the past, I found the Simply Cotton to be a little bit stubborn almost. It, <laughs> It is not very absorbent. In a couple videos I found where it just really does not seem uh, to absorb things well, which means that using this dry powder is a fun technique to do with it. Uh, like in hand painting, I found that I've had some trouble getting color to even go into it. <laughs> so, orange. Some lighter orange patches, Leave some space for some of the black. But I, I love a good sort of random, non-repeating colorway. Still want some flex, small bits of orange on some of these other areas. Cool. <laughs> this is just so much fun. Uh, <laughs> I'm really, really enjoying using this dye as a powder um, instead of the liquid form. The liquid form is fun, but this feels like, it feels a bit limited. Like it would be hard to get these, the control, this level of control with the squeeze bottles that come in the kit. Some light black, do, do. heavier, heavier. <laughs> I mean, I think that I would be really happy if this stays as is, being really sort of splotchy and speckly, or if things spread out a lot more. So it's nice to have that flexibility in what you would enjoy color-wise. Because again, I think, I've talked about my sort of mindset and my uh, method, and I think that if you approach dyeing yarn with, okay, these are the colors I play with, I wonder what we're gonna get, you can always be happy and find excitement in the results. When it's easier to be disappointed when you go into something and think, okay, I want specifically to get X, Y, Z. Uh, so this is the way that I'm able to remain excited with the results. Do, do, do. Trying to get some color onto these ends. 
Okay, I am, I am going to give this another five minutes. Uh, <laughs> I was like, uh, I see a hole. Okay. I'm going to give this another five minutes. I'm going to move then probably maybe, uh, you could see here. Sometimes I know exactly what I want to do. Sometimes I pick up and I see a ton of white. Okay, this one looks like there's really good color penetration. What about the Simply Cotton? Okay, we've got heavier and lighter. And then in the Lindy Chain, oh, there's color penetration through there. So again, I don't mind some white patches. It's just when I first picked it up, so it looked like a huge section of white. Stroll, there's white sections, but again, this, this is spreading and the penetration is not, not too bad. I think there's just, you know, a little, some little areas where I might want to add a tiny bit more, but again, I don't really mind there being some white. Uh, of course, now my hands are damp, but okay. Yeah, I'm going to let this sit, I think now for five minutes. And then I think I'm going to wrap it up. I, you know, I want to check and be like really thorough for, for coverage and stuff, but I know that these colors will spread out. And so I want to have some trust in that as well. So I'm going to take a damp towel and wipe up the edges. And then in five minutes, we'll get ready. <laughs> we'll get ready to start steaming. Oh, I guess I have to get my steamer basket ready. Hmm, okay. <laughs> I'm going to let this sit for five minutes. Whoops, I did not exactly set the timer. But I am now going to roll this up as one gigantic jelly roll. And then I am going to place this, there we go. I'm going to go ahead and place this like so in my steamer basket. I am going to steam this for 30 minutes now. You can see my jelly roll is nice in this steamy basket and so it'll be hot, but it is wrapped up in plastic so it won't necessarily get a lot more wet. I'm still expecting the colors to spread out, but you never know. So let's see what happens. Okay. the. 30 minutes is up and to me it already looks like things did spread out let's see if I can pick this up there we go not a lot of dripping but those colors look cool I see a lot of yellow which is sort of exciting but now we need to let this yarn cool completely so we can wash it let's start washing our yarn I might at some point separate them for the washing process for these first steps. You can see we've got a lot of color coming off. But even so, we have a lot of color in our yarn. It looks like whew, some nice variety of hues. I probably will separate them at some point for the washing, but I want to get as much of this heavy bleeding out as I can, but oh my gosh, look at this linen already. I mean, I see, I see some speckling almost. I think that this is all going to be really, really fun. So I'm going to go ahead and wash this until the water runs clear. Once we've got a little less bleeding going on, actually I'll add, actually I'll add a little now. I might add more later, but I'll add a little bit of Dawn dish soap. Um, sometimes I use other liquid dish soap because it helps us lodge the excess dye. But I am going to keep rinsing until the water runs clear. And then I will hang up the yarn to dry and show you what the finished yarn looks like. All of this yarn is 
just fantastic. I think that those came out beautiful, painterly watercolor. There are speckles. There's many, many layers of color, more than just the three that we started with. Some of this might have been breaking. Some of this is a little bit of color mixing. But this all happened randomly on the yarn to give us these stunning, non-repeating colorways. Can you tell which one is which? First, we have the Stroll Fingering Weight Yarn, which is 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon. Then we have the Simply Cotton Fingering, which is 100% Organic Cotton. Then there's Lindy Chain, which is 70% Linen, 30% Cotton. And this one is cool because it's really a, this chain ply yarn. And then finally, we have the new Cotton Blue Clay, which is 100% cotton. So looking at all of this yarn, it is remarkable how similar the colorways are. If anything, I might say that the, the Lindy Chain is a little more muted than the other colorways, but I think that of all of them, it is probably the least absorbent uh, because I think that there's a pretty high twist in the single that has been plied here. In the stroll, I think I see the most sp color spread. In this Simply Cotton Fingering, I do see some speckling and some really tiny, discrete patches of color. And the same thing in the Cotton Boucle. We have some little patches of color here in the stroll, but overall, I think that the color wicked through that fiber overall, and that we have fewer pastel patches in this yarn than we do with some of the others. I want to zoom in to give you a closer look of some of the way that these colors modeled together and some of the small, beautiful specks. Uh, here's the Lindy chain, which is a little bit paler, but just a hair. But this cotton boucle, I am in love with this yarn and the way it absorbs color and the definition of the yarn from the thick and thin plies. I'll say that as soon as I finished dyeing this yarn, I went off and ordered some more of it. I am beyond excited to play with it more. It is really exciting for me to get colorways that are so similar on a wool-based yarn like the Stroll Fingering and then these cellulose fibers. All of these three are 100% cellulose-based yarn, and two of them are 100% cotton. And so this really means that you can get some of these really fun, exciting colorways that you love on non-wool-based yarn. So even though you can't use food coloring to dye cotton, you can, there's a lot of dye that is really readily available that you can use to create stunning colorways at home. Now, a tiny bit of caution here. This yarn is beautiful with these very fall colorways, but I started with red, orange, and black. And in here, probably from the black and a little bit from the orange, we also have yellow, blue, and a bit of green. And so, tie-dyes break. And when you're doing these kinds of techniques, you might not get the advertised shades that you see on, on the packet. So therefore, if you want to play with this technique to dye enough yarn for a larger project, I recommend doing a test run and seeing how the colors interplay and interact with one another on a single skein, just so that way you can get the colors that you actually want. However, if you're like me and you just want to play and see, I wonder what will happen if I throw these three colors dry onto yarn, then you can be just as excited as I am because these are absolutely stunning. And I am really, really enjoying using dry dye powder to dye yarn. And, you know, I've been playing around a little bit with dry Kool-Aid, but I have some other dry food coloring I want to play with, and there's also still the dry 
commercial acid dyes that I have to play with. So who knows if you can get colors like this using acid dyes, like commercial dyes and food coloring. One of the reasons why we have this painterly-like effect is that when we add this dry powder onto the yarn, it spreads out. It does not strike to the fibers super, super fast. If this were Kool-Aid and we did this, we would have had itty bitty tiny speckles on the stroll yarn and it wouldn't have spread out to give these longer patches of color that could then blend together. So it's important to keep in mind the type of dye you're using and the types of fiber you're using when you're playing around with these kinds of techniques because if you want this kind of effect, uh, if you have conditions where the colors are going to strike super fast to your yarn, then you might not get something that is so impressionistic and watercolor-esque. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and thank you so much for supporting the Chemnitz Tutorials channel and giving me the opportunity to play around and dye four different skeins of yarn at the same time. This isn't just four skeins of yarn, these are four different yarn bases. And if you'd like to learn more about any of these bare colors, you can find some links to the Nitpicks website and each of these bases in the video description. I am able to play with so many different types of yarn and colors and experiments thanks to the support of viewers like you. So if you haven't already, please subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel and give this video a like. These things really help me continue to make more fun content. And if you'd like to support Chemnitz on a different kind of level, check out the Chemnitz Patreon. You can find a link in the video description. And when you become a patron, you can get early access to new content, behind the scenes sneak peeks, notifications of advanced notifications of Etsy restocks, and more. Thank you so much for all of your support, and thank you for watching.